Australia's drug regulator took a first step towards making Xanax a lot harder to come by because it turns out the drug that's meant to treat anxiety has got a lot of people worried. The courts here had a case uh, a couple of years ago of a young 17-year-old, while binging on Xanax, put his four-month-old son in the back of his car and got involved in a police chase. He lost control and collided with another vehicle uh, and killed uh, its elderly driver. Magistrate Tony Parsons has some horrific stories to tell about the anti-anxiety drug Xanax. It's a really terrible drug. When he was arrested, he remembered nothing of the events of that day. The drug, generically known as Alprazolam, <laughs> is meant to be a secondary option for short-term relief for panic attacks. But in 2010, doctors wrote 680,000 prescriptions for it across Australia. We actually looked at 1990 levels at, all the way up to 2010 and found that there's been over a 1,400% increase in the supply of Alprazolam in Victoria. Andrew says the increase in prescriptions is far outstripping the number of Australians with a genuine need for the drug. We're concerned that there may be um, prescribers out there who are using this drug for a longer term use. And because it's designed to give immediate relief, if it's used for too long, it can be highly addictive. And that's how people end up standing before the courts. I see people who struggle with Xanax problems every day of the week. And for heroin users who also take Xanax, the risk of overdose significantly increases. Today, the Therapeutic Goods Administration agreed that the drug is causing problems and recommended it be given a more restricted classification. The regulation of this drug is easy because it comes from doctor's prescription pads and I think if the regulators take that step, the problem should disappear overnight. Dr Christian Rowan is the Director of Addiction Sciences Queensland. Christian, Xanax is a pretty well-known drug. Do you think it's currently too easy to get a prescription from a GP? Well, look, certainly there's been growing concern about it over the last uh, few years. Uh, it's got a limited role uh, in relation to specific uh, types of anxiety and uh, addiction specialists and public health physicians have been becoming concerned simply because of uh, what's happened as a, a drug of dependence um, and also the diversion of it for purposes other than what it was uh, initially intended for. Christian, the recommendation here has been to take it from a level, uh, I guess, similar to something like an antibiotic, to a classification that morphine sits on. Is this going to make it a lot harder to get? Uh, well, certainly what that will mean in Queensland, where I come from, that there'll need to be uh, an application to the drugs and dependence unit there, to the regulators, to, um, uh, to have the ongoing prescribing of that medication. So, uh, again, this is recognition that there has been a problem in relation to this medication as far as uh, uh, it being a drug of dependence um, and also that there being an abuse potential and also that some people have uh, diverted this drug uh, for purposes than other, other than what it was originally intended for. And what do you think the chances are of that recommendation becoming law? Look, I think it's, um, it's highly likely. I mean, certainly uh, this medication, if it was to be combined uh, with significant amounts of alcohol um, or even with heroin, we've seen deaths uh, in relation to people who've uh, been injecting heroin and also used, used Xanax. So I think it's highly likely that it uh, will be permanently uh, scheduled as a, a Schedule 8 medication and uh, that'll have implications uh, for all the jurisdictions around Australia. There has been a big push. We've done something here on the project about it in the last month to encourage people, you know, suffering from anxiety to get help. We want people to get help. Is it about just getting the right kind of help and not just relying on a drug like this? Yeah, well, again, I guess people who've got anxiety disorders, I mean, they need to see their general practitioner to have a, a proper assessment um, and to understand that, you know, medications are but part of the treatment when it comes to anxiety, but there are uh, a range of other strategies, um, psychological treatments and other things which can be used to help with anxiety. And so uh, medications have their place, but they're not the be-all and end-all when it comes to managing um, anxiety. Christian, thanks very much for helping us understand it tonight. Thanks very much. Just as a measure of how big a problem it is out there right now um, and how doctors are really, really cracking down on prescriptions, I actually had a guy in the vet clinic not too long ago actually approach me to get a, a Xanax prescription from a vet for, for his own needs. Because he couldn't get it from the doctor? Yeah, he was that desperate for it. Mm. Did he actually dress up like an animal to try to get him to... Uh, <laughs> that, would have had to think twice if he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, certainly not. Uh, we're going to take